the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth. We have Joe Rogan talking to Jordan B. Peterson about Jordan Peterson's realization about the Bible. I'm interested in seeing this right here. This is from um, someone by the name of Bad Intro. The Joe Rogan experience. If categories dis 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 dissolve, especially fundamental ones, the culture is dissolving because the culture is a structure of category. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Right. So, and in fact, culture is a culture is a structure of category that we all share. So we see things the same way. Well, that's why we can talk. I mean, not exactly the same way because then we'd have nothing to talk about. But roughly speaking, we have a bedrock of agreement. Uh, that's the Bible, by the way. So I just walked through the Museum of the Bible in Washington. That was very cool. It's a very cool museum. So the structure. I'm glad he mentioned that. When I drove past that museum, I just asked my, my guardian if she ever, because when you're driving on 295 and you're going past, um, you know, other expressways that's connected to it, and you're about to head toward Main Avenue, which leads you to the Monument, 17th Street, which runs into Connecticut Avenue, and 16th Street is where the um, where the president is, the White House, all that other stuff, Pennsylvania Avenue, blah blah blah. But when you're headed toward that way, you see off off of off on um, 295, you can see the the Bible Museum, which is in D.C. And I asked my guardian, um, who raised me since I was like three bless her i take her to the store once a month and um and i asked her if she has a has she ever been to the bible museum because she's heavy into the book of god like everything that she does is ah lord i hear you father thank you wow okay okay let me just stop man because something something's taking over me right now that's what the bible yeah that's what provides. i figured out i mean i just figured this out this week so it was a cool it was a cool thing to walk through because it's it's chronological. They have one floor, which is the history of the Bible. Mm. It's not exactly that. It's really what it is, is the history of the book. Now, in many ways, the first book was the Bible. I mean, literally, because at one point there was only one book. Like, as far as our Western culture is concerned, there was one book. And for a while, literally, there was only one book. Who in the heck goes to a podcast dressed in a full tux. Bro, you are a class act, man. I'll tell you one thing about Jordan B. Peterson. He is a class act, for real. This dude, he's a classy guy. He really is. Someone taught him well. Someone taught him very well. And that book was the Bible. And then before it was the Bible, it was, a, you know, it was scrolls and it was writings on papyrus. And, but it was, we were starting to aggregate written text together. And it went through all sorts of technological transformations and then it became books that everybody could buy the book everybody could buy and the first one of those was the bible and then it became all sorts of books that everybody could buy but all those books in some sense emerged out of that underlying book and that book itself the bible isn't a book it's a library it's a collection of books and so what i figured out was partly because i was talking to my brother-in-law jim keller who's the world's greatest chip designer and has now designed a chip that's as powerful as the human brain which is optimized for artificial intelligence learning by the way and so i talked to him about that he said you heard of the internet i said yeah jim i've heard of the internet he said this is way more revolutionary than that so in any case we were talking about meaning in text because we were talking about translation and the problem of understanding text and jim said the meaning of words is coded in the relationship of the words to one another. And the postmodernists make that case that all meaning is derived from the relationship between words. That's, that's wrong because, well, what about rage? That's not words. And what about moving your hand? That's not words. So it's wrong, but, but part of it's right because the meaning we derive from the verbal domain is encoded in the relationship between words. So. So now then you think, well, let's think about the relationship between words. Well, some words are dependent on other words. Some ideas are dependent on other ideas. The more ideas are dependent on a given idea, the more fundamental that idea is. By de that's a definition of fundamental. So now imagine you have an aggregation of texts in a civilization. You say, which are the fundamental texts? And that Hey, thank you so much for the sub. 
True Cream. Listen, guys, I'm still I'm I'm listening to him break things down, but it's something about when Jordan B. Peterson speaks, right? Because he is a natural orator. When he speaks, I, I I just I just listen. I just I just listen. I try not to interrupt him too much. And plus, most times when you do interrupt Jordan B. Peterson, nine times out of ten, what you say upon that interruption will not be as good as what he already is saying. Because it's Jordan B. Peterson. I mean, what you're going to say is going to be TED Talk level? No, it's not. So, the answer is the texts upon which most other texts depend. And so you'd put Shakespeare way in there in English because so many texts are dependent on Shakespeare's literary revelations. And Milton would be in that category. And Dante would be in that category, at least in translation. Fundamental authors, part of the Western canon, not because of the arbitrary dictates of power, but because those texts influenced more other texts. And then you think about that as a hierarchy, okay, with the Bible at its base, which is certainly the case. Now imagine that's the entire corpus of, ling of linguistic production, all things considered. Now how do you understand that? Like, literally, how do you understand that? The answer is, you sample it by reading and listening to stories and listening to people talk. You sample that whole domain. You build a low-resolution representation of that in your, inside you. And then you listen and see through that. And so it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth. Wow! It's not that the Bible is true. It's the precondition for the manif uh, manifestation of truth. <laughs> Let me tell you something. John B. Peterson talks like a pimp. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just saying he has a gift of gab. He knows how to put, he knows how to put English language together and make it do what it do. He does. He, he does. You, we're listening to him together. I'm not making this up, and my freaking left eye won't stop watering after listening to that damn song by Bread called Everything I Own. Oh my gracious. This is nuts. Which makes it way more true than just true. It's a whole different kind of true. And I think this is, I think this is not only literally the case, factually, I think it can't be any other way. It's the only way we can solve the problem of perception. That dude's a beast. I, I think he has other videos out there, too, where he's explaining the Bible. Many different videos where he's explaining the Bible. But I don't need explanation at this moment. What I need to do is continue to meditate on the word of God. So do, so do we all. Some of y'all know the Bible backwards and front. Some of you had to do it when you was a child and you never revisited it when you became an adult. Some of you don't believe in the Bible at all. Some of you do go into the bible and with the with the marker and a sh uh what you call it um the highlighter and you got the little corners folded and you got notes <laughs> just all over your bible and then it's like real roughed up because you go through it a lot <laughs> some of y'all have bibles like that i know listen that's amazing keep doing your thing keep doing your thing but don't let that um, um that information just stay with you Give that out. Give it out. Okay? Give it out. That's a huge fortune you have inside of you. Give that out. Give it Give it to some people. Or show it. Continue to show the love of God. But at the end of the day, continue to share it. Okay? And you ain't got to share the love of God by saying, Scripture, one Scripture, um, one, um, first, uh, first Corinthians 10, 13 says, No, you don't have to do that. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, You don't have to do that. But you could. That would be a dope way to do it. But.